welcome to another Keel Hall Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Logan, and we've got a lot of Sea Thieves news to cover today, so tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. Ahoy there, pirates. I hope you had yourselves a good week and a good weekend. I know I did. This week, we got cargo runs, a change to the Ferry of the Damned, a few things to let us know about some of the things going on with Pioneer testing, as well as the Captain's Log, First Mate's Log, thanks to Jorvik, and reviews. That and more on this week's episode of Keel Hauled Podcast. <laughs> First up on today's docket, let's dive into the patch notes as we get cargo runs this week. So along with the Forsaken Shores, we are now into the third week of the campaign and cargo runs are now active, which means you can now start turning Merchant Alliance items in to Morrow's Peak Outpost over in the Forsaken Shores, something I know a lot of us keep forgetting isn't actually a thing, but now it is, and that's great because yeah, yeah, there's a, uh, you find stuff out there and uh, you want to turn it in, and that's great, and now you can. So with cargo runs, we now have the opportunity to gather different types, of three different resources. I've, I've talked about this when we got the video back in the day, but you've got plants, which are uh, really obstructive to your view when you grab them. Uh, exotic silks or, or cloths, I guess. Uh, you get also some uh, rum bottles, which are really kind of interesting because they um, are a lot harder to to take care of and the best way i've kind of found to do it was just to jump into water and then climb the ladder you know if you jump from a dock to your ship you're more than likely going to start causing some uh damage to them which is kind of interesting you know it's it's not something that we've really had to deal with uh in the game you know stuff breaks but it's not something that's of consequence especially in the sense that it doesn't actually cost you gold but this week with the cargo runs it's been very interesting i haven't done any in the devil's roar just so that I could try and get a chance to work with them specifically to kind of develop uh, how I want to do them and and I've really only spent time on the actual sloop itself I feel like the sloop really is the perfect ship for, uh, for these the vessel if you will with the plants uh, I've typically been filling up the ship with enough water to have the water level just above the crate for the plants so they'll get the water I still don't know how they survive off a of silk or uh, salt water but that's okay I don't need to understand that the crates of of clothing is kind of interesting uh that's something i don't really understand you know uh, up until now we've we've been getting crates of sugar and crates of silk and exotic spices and they've all been fine underwater you know you find them in shipwrecks you find them in the water and nothing really hinders the amount of gold that you get from them uh, as far as like elements are concerned, you know, cannon shots don't damage them. Water doesn't disintegrate the, sh the sugar. Um, it's very strange that now in the game we have clothing or cloth that is really expensive and exotic. And, you know, what what's the difference between these and the, the exotic silks? I feel like maybe, maybe we should have just exchanged one for the other you know instead of having uh instead of having crates of ex of uh exotic silks that we should have just had the the clothing in the crates as uh as it were and and i'm also kind of curious you know why why the crate is open uh in in this aspect i mean obviously it's for the mechanic to be able to have water affect them whether it be rain or the ocean itself uh, interesting choice. I'm, I'm kind of curious. The rum bottles, man, these things are, um, they, they're interesting because I, I like them. I think they're a great addition to the game, but all of this kind of comes down to, to one thing. And that's, these aren't worth very much gold. You, you can get eight. Uh, I think eight is the max that I've, that I've been able to get from someone in the world. Uh, whether it be either the clothing merchant or the weapon smith or the, the barkeep. You can just about get these from any NPC in the game. The trouble is, is that when you get them and you have to sail to a different place to actually turn them in, in their best condition, you're only going to be getting 350 gold. Now, let's, let's just, for example, do some quick little math and say that 350 50 gold times eight is 2,800 gold. And you think, okay, well, that's that's great considering I got this from a message in a bottle. That's a guaranteed amount of gold 
for uh, something that, you know, I, I didn't have any level requirements for. You know, I didn't have to be level 50 in Merchant Alliance to be able to get that quality of loot. So that's great if you're new and you're starting out. But let's say that you're Pirate Legend and 2,800 gold doesn't really do much for you. You can typically get one of those from a couple really good chests or a couple villainous skulls. And if you're out in the Devil's Roar, it's double. So yeah, uh, pristine items in the Devil's Roar will give you upwards of 700, 500, or 300-ish gold. And that's a little bit better, but we're still talking about maybe, at best, going to be getting 5,600? Yeah, yeah, 5,600 gold. Which, again, that's nice, but these are very fragile items. These are the rum doesn't take much to be damaged. And with the roar, if you get hit once with a, a molten rock, they're, they're probably gone. They're probably broken at that point, or at least uh, splintered or cracked. With a cloth, it's a little bit easier, but you still have to deal with the fact that in, in say, like a, a galleon, you need to have those in like the middle deck area where they're, they're less susceptible to actually getting wet. With the plants, I feel like those are going to be the easiest to deal with. Uh, you can generally keep enough water in your ship that you won't be worried about sinking, and you'll be able to keep them alive the easiest. And if you're not sure, stop toss them in the water go back out pick them back up so they one thing i did learn about this is that as far as reputation goes the plants are the wor worth the least and the rum is worth the most and it was interesting to find this out because i haven't been looking at these from that perspective for so long I haven't looked at any of the Forsaken Roar stuff, except for Athena's chests, which are the only thing that still actually gains me reputation in, in, in that aspect. So, as far as Merchant Alliance goes, I think these will be great as something to do while you're out working on other stuff. Along with these updates, we also managed to get some changes to the current game. Uh, one thing that I think was probably one of the biggest changes that I really enjoyed is the fact that the skeleton ship rewards have been increased. So back when we were doing curse sales, you would get at least four captain's chests and four skull skeleton captain skulls uh, for completing the five waves, you know, the, the four waves of two skeleton crews each and then the first initial one when you started. And that was a fair amount of gold for doing those, which is what drove a lot of players to actually go out and do them. A lot of people are still out there doing them just because they are fun, even though they are still really resource intensive. Uh, I don't know if Curse Cannons have really actually helped that because I haven't gone out to do one since then. I, I felt like four weeks of those was enough to kind of tide me over for a while. That being said, having this actually be out in the world now where it's profitable again to go do them, I think will really help out the, the, the desire to actually go out and complete these because as it stands, it's kind of easy to go out and do a skeleton fort pretty quickly. You can go out, knock it out in about 30 minutes, sometimes better if you're better at at uh, crowding or, you know, corralling them in with powder kegs or, or in through doorways, things like that. And generally, there isn't a whole lot of opposition because most of the time, a lot of players right now are still over in the Devil's Roar doing the harder voyages for the higher reputation and, and gold earning. So when you go out to do ship or, or ship, you know, the skeleton ships, it's interesting to to think that right now they, they can only exist one at a time. Uh, you can't have a skeleton ship out at the same time as the skeleton fort. And thanks to Music Me, who grabbed uh, Sonic Bobs or Drew Stevens from the Rare Team, one of the producers, they actually found on Reddit his post that actually came to us uh, to let us know kind of some thoughts as far as like uh, what's going to be happening in the future. So Sonic Bob writes, Hey everyone. I've seen this raised a few times since we introduced the Skeleton Ship Cloud encounters to the world. Time for a little update. As you've seen, Skeleton Ship Battles and Skeleton Forts are never active at the same time. Both of these wave-type encounters are pretty intensive on our surfer performance, and we allocate a large pool of our AI budget to make sure we can fulfill the waves of enemies while still keeping islands populated with animals and skeletons for ambient encounters as well as quests. While this is a current limitation, we are currently doing some work to improve how we schedule these encounters and add a few more ship encounters types while we're at it. One area of focus is having more control around our encounters. If no one is engaging with that skeleton ship battle, then we'll change things up and activate a different encounter like a fort. 
will provide a bit more of an update on this piece of work soon, as this is only a small part of the improvements we're planning. Cheers for reaching out, everyone. That's a really great message, because as it stands, you either like doing them or you don't like doing them. And if you don't like doing them and no one else is doing them, then you're kind of stuck and you can't take advantage of the other encounter. Personally, I really still enjoy doing skeleton forts. I think it's fun and exciting in a place where people can get drawn together where it still has a potential for pvp with skeleton ships you still have that but because it's out in the ocean it's less i don't know it feels less tangible like you can't really kind of hang on to what is your treasure you know if you if you get treasure you have to toss it out overboard and one thing i really need to actually go out and do is do these with cursed cannonballs and rowboats because i feel like my experience would be improved if I actually went out there and had a rowboat in the water that we could kind of grab loot and toss it on. Since the rowboat won't sink on its own and chances are skeleton ships aren't going to shoot at it because skeletons don't shoot at them already, I feel like they're going to be kind of a nice little buoy to go out and drop loot on. So if you get something, then you just have to get out to the rowboat, drop it, and then take, take a mermaid back. And then you have your little rowboat as kind of your cash cow for the treasure that you would normally get while going into skeleton ships to try and make sure that they that they sink as you're working your way towards that final final fight <laughs> So one thing that I did think was kind of interesting about this little blurb that we got from uh, Sonic Bob or Drew, uh, one of the things that I thought was really interesting was them talking about uh, a large pool of AI budget and just how intensive it is on their server performance. Uh, because one of the things that we found out in the patch notes this week was that the mermaid statues, the thing that I mentioned last week that we didn't really have much lore about or anything that was really kind of, you know, going on with those, those have actually been removed from the game temporarily uh, due to performance issues. So strange that these are causing performance issues. I don't know if they know why it is. It says that they're they're being uh, improved upon and as they're kind of investigating like why it's causing these performance issues and they're hoping to get these re-enabled. And I'm personally, I'm kind of interested as to what the main drive behind these is. And this is kind of going into an area where I feel like, I feel like it would be better if we actually had had the doubloons from prior uh, events still available. Now, I know we, we've already got the, the Cursed Cruise one with the Reaper's Mark. We already have those doubloons available for us, The red, you know, past the actual event. Uh, you don't get the cosmetics, but you still get the doubloons, and that'll help people become Pirate Legend faster as they can get those and then put those towards levels, gold, whatever they want. Maybe even just stockpile them for the next event. That being said, the mermaid statues don't offer doubloons anymore. In fact, the only reason to actually have them in the game is for the titles and the commendations. And that's about it. So I'm wondering if they could maybe address the fact that the the prior or the previous build rat adventures are not just they're just not worth it some people still haven't completed all of the commendations at skull forts with the powder keg skeletons because not a lot of people are going to skeleton forts to do them uh and not a lot of people are going and if they are doing it they aren't going there to actually help out other people they're going there typically to murder other people and take the loot for themselves kind of weird i don't know Am I crazy for thinking that? Do I feel do I feel like maybe it's it's a a little too easy and that they're they're kind of catering to the casual player for wanting to make prior build rat adventure commendations reward doubloons? Or is that just something that I feel like would actually cause them to enrich the world further by making sure that there's point and purpose in having these past things? Like when was the last time anyone wanted to go jump onto a skeleton throne? July? I don't know. Just to kind of go back real quick and touch touch on the cargo runs. I I really just I really have to reiterate the fact that I'm not happy with the amount of gold that they offer. And also, I'm really really kind of puzzled by the fact that the amount of gold that you get for these is static. Like you you are you always know exactly how much gold you're going to get based on the quality of the item instead of having the item at a certain quality and having it vary widely in the amount of gold that it's offered. And if that's the case, are we 
is it is is this an indication that we're moving towards a world where items are going to have static values and you can start expecting those values or are chests and animals and skulls always going to have a variance to a certain percentage for turn in value because that's it's, it's such a strange thing that it's not a set value as it is and the fact that i've come to terms with the fact that it could be you know you could have uh, an athena's chest from the devil's roll vary anywhere between four and 7.9 thousand gold that's quite a variance for that kind of an item and the amount of time that it takes to do that is is not something to scoff at uh especially now that they have the cargo runs in the athena's fortune voyages it's and and i'm not even sure if this is something that they intended to put in as a replacement for the original merchant alliance because i feel like maybe it might be a little bit faster with the cargo runs uh being included as part of the athena's fortune but it seems strange to me that they would that they would put these in as static prices and not change you know something as as widely varying in cost as athena's fortune or a, a chest of legends from a devil's roar athena i don't know that's ah oh god that still kind of still kind of irks me um not quite sure why that why that feels so weird to me and also, just to kind of touch on, they did mention that this was something that you can do uh, while doing other voyages. And that is that is actually the case. Uh, you can actually throw down a cargo run. And as long as you're relatively close, so there, if say you throw down a cargo run and it tells you to go off, we'll, we'll just say hypothetically, you're in Plunder Outpost. And it tells you to go find someone at one of the local sea posts. And you throw it up and you want to be able to put up a merchant alliance voyage as well well you can't put down a merchant alliance voyage until you've actually picked up those items so then you have to sail somewhere to pick up the six six to eight items or four to eight items and then you have to go back to the outpost turn in or or or, or grab grab a voyage for a normal merchant alliance voyage place that grab all your crates and then go sailing out so while there is an advantage to doing it it still doesn't it doesn't truly allow you to be able to do multiple voyages at the same time which is still something I one or two i still want to have something very similar to the way that the messages in a barrel work where you grab a message in a barrel and it is one voyage and that one voyage counts for any of the three trade companies and the trade companies uh will will reward you for those and they could be on anywhere so you could have a gold hoarders and an order of souls uh stacked on top of each other for the same island that's that's really the the kind of the main way that i want to do it and i have noticed that uh one of the few things that that has actually come up as a result of doing the messages in a bottle. The messages in a bottle have really kind of been pro and con for me. I spent a lot of time grabbing a lot of the different uh, barrels on accident, and I was kind of upset the fact that you couldn't actually throw those away. Now I've just embraced it. Now I'm just saying, okay, let's go ahead and grab them. They might be cargo runs, at which point it's a supplementary income to doing regular missions, uh, especially if it's something nearby. So I have an Athena's voyage setting me up to visit somewhere between four and eight islands, uh, we'll say, uh, or at least eight islands for sure, because you, you have typically one uh, voyage per uh, or one island per voyage. So for sure, you know, you're going to visit at least eight, uh, probably nine total islands on an Athena's voyage. The cargo runs are nice because it can at least, you could, you know, if you're going to one island, you can go to the, uh, the NPC that's on that island or at least an NPC nearby, pick up those items and then hopefully work your way to another island that you have something to do there to actually be able to uh, turn those in for a certain amount of gold while you're slowly working on your Athena's voyage. That's nice, but that's no not much different than having regular messages in a bottle. Uh, so I it's it's interesting. Um, I think I think the best combination I got was uh, when we had um, there was one small island in Athena's fortune and a uh, brig crew we were we were working our way to another island after we had finished an Athena's fortune and we had 11 skeleton captains and five chests 
all on one tiny island. And that was interesting because we basically just used the cannons to mow down all of the skeleton captains. And then we just basically threw our shovels into the ground and hit gold. So I, I see the benefit. Uh, I still hope that there's a way that we can eventually get to the point where you can cancel or uh, discard some of the messages from the barrels. All right. So one little thing that I did want to talk about are some of the fixes that happened this patch. We now have rowboats casting the appropriate reflections in water. And the only reason I really actually bring this up is... Because I want you pirates to go out, and thanks to Thor Von Bliss for mentioning this to me one day, because he actually pointed out the fact that while ships do have reflections on the water surface, the paint job is reflected, the sails are reflected, the ship is reflected, but the figureheads are not. So, next time you're out there sailing around and you pull up to an island, take a quick glance and see if you can see the figurehead in the water. Let me know if you can. I'm curious. Someone can do it. Grab a screenshot of it. One of the nice things that they did this patch was make the rowboats a lot less squeaky, which is really great because there was a lot of noise going on with those guys and I'm glad to, I'm really glad that they decided to go ahead and kind of make them less audible. I don't, I really didn't think they, they intended it to be that way. I think that was just a bug that happened uh, they said that the audio was overlapping when rowing the boat. That's good. I'm glad. Uh, so some of the other things that happened were just little things that were, were, weren't really game breaking. Definitely not like the, uh, the spyglass bug of 2018, but you know, some of the things that you would normally come across as far as, uh, bugs or glyphical, uh, grip, gl uh, graphical errors in the game. So for example, geysers will no longer appear on top of chests, uh, flooding at the back of a sloop will appear visually correct when sinking um the ocean will appear completely black when the kraken encounter begins things like that and uh, i'm really glad to see that a lot of the fixes that came in this patch were some minor ones you know we haven't had any major problems because this latest developer update went into a lot about what they want to do kind of going forward. Now, we've been talking about some of the things that they plan on doing as far as opening up the Pioneer program and making it more e or making it easier for pirates to get into the, the Pioneer program to be able to do testing. But they've also been talking about having a way for pirates to be rewarded for participating in the Pioneer program. Right now, if you do it, it's great, but there's not really any reason outside of the love of the game and wanting to make it better. So they're talking about rewards. And I think this is kind of goes hand in hand with the deckhand sales uh, or the founder uh, sales. I think what they'll be doing is probably putting out some ship liveries, uh, maybe not like a full set, but definitely like sales that they can use to kind of indicate that you have been playing in the Pioneer program to help support the game. And maybe pirates will come out and they'll see you wearing those sails and think, oh, you, you probably know something. We'll hold you hot hostage or they'll thank you for the amount of time that you put in helping making the game better so it's kind of nice to see this uh i I'm, I'm glad that they're willing to open it up because that was definitely a, a concern of mine you know and, and you've heard me talk about it here many a times wanting to have more pioneers available to test and uh use the 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 testing forms as a way to uh, give them feedback that they can act upon to make sure that the game is uh, at a better state when they actually go live with updates and that's exactly what they plan on doing so I'm I'm stoked I'm, I'm really stoked to see that they're that they're planning on doing this and that it's something that's actually going to be happening you know maybe one day I'll actually get into the pioneers program and uh find out about all the stuff that's coming down the line that I can't tell you because that's how NDAs work yeah what now what now <laughs> All right, so to move on to the next part of this week's news, uh, the next item on today's docket, I'm going to combine into one thing, one kind of molded type of thing. And that's mostly just to kind of let you guys know that there's a great video out there uh, regarding the visual effects of the Sea of Thieves for just about everything, man. Uh, they brought in some of the visual uh, the, the visual effects team, actually a, a married couple, one of whom actually signed my Sea of Thieves art book, and they broke down a lot of the different visual effects uh, in the game as far as where they got them, how they got them, the reference material that they used to make. And a lot of the, the reference material was actually stuff that they made, uh, especially in regards to bubbles and fire. They went out filming the sea to actually get like what it looks like when the surf crests or 
breaks up against something, you know. It and man, it felt so well produced. Kudos to the uh, to the to the the video management team over there because I I had so much fun watching this. It felt like a full out documentary on the visual effects of Sea of Thieves, and this game is beautiful, and you know that. And to see just how much work went into little stuff like the the small bit of smoke that comes off of a a lantern on the Ferry of the Damned, all the way up to just how many explosions. Uh, explosive projectiles came out of a volcano it's insane it's amazing to see this kind of work uh the other thing that i wanted to kind of talk on was the the uh, the weekly stream that went out last tuesday tuesday with kaida wrath i really love this one i and i can't wait to uh see how the next one goes um but it was awesome to see mike and shelly kind of getting at each other and having kaida go uh out there and they <laughs> the very end of it was great because because they went to a skull fort with, I guess, a couple people that Kaida Rath knew. I don't know the full story on this, but it was definitely people that recognized her, and she recognized a couple of them. They went to the skull fort, and they were clearing it. And it was funny because they started attacking the, the brig, and it wasn't long before uh, they were able to actually get them to stop and to to kind of group up. This is all fine and well. They finish up the, uh, the skull fort, and they open up the chest, and Mike starts shuttling stuff to the ship, very much in the same way that most people would do that. And one of the crew members of the brig, and I love this, and I clipped it because it was so perfect, challenges Mike to a duel in the the <laughs> in, in the Thunderdome or the fort. And Mike is is kind of, you know, telling Shelly and Kaida, you know, I'll I'll be there, I'll be there. Hold on, I gotta square something away, you know. And it's it's not much longer. You see, you cut back over to Mike's screen and he is raising the anchor on the brig. And it's so hilarious because him and John are sitting there realizing what's going on. Shelly has no clue. Kaidareth has no clue. He's taking the he's taking the the stronghold chest and running, and it's hilarious. It, it really was just a sight to see, and it was funny to see them kind of play pirates because a lot of these weekly streams have been great, especially for answering questions and just kind of getting more information and touching base with the community. Uh, but to see some proper pirating in in the most hilarious way ever, uh, with <laughs> with ultimately the the saddest uh, or not the saddest, I shouldn't say the saddest but it was definitely the uh the most anticlimactic ending to mike running off with the chests and then convincing them to come join the the brig because someone had obviously sailed away with their ship so they went back to go try and get it <laughs> only to realize that mike had just played them all for for fools and and run off with the stronghold chest and convinced his crew to come back god that was great that was some of the the most fun i had watching a weekly stream and i think i think this week's stream will probably be i mean I'm hoping it'll be good. We don't we don't know who's going to be there, but I, I have a feeling I, I have a hint on who it might be. Uh, and, and it'll hopefully it'll be good. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. I I always enjoy them regardless. But we'll find out probably probably Monday. Uh, hopefully who's who's going to be on the next weekly stream. Um, still, God, man, those are great to great to watch. I I really love those. It, it brightens up my Tuesday mornings, especially after a Monday morning merch mission. Which I if you haven't been paying attention, I've actually been streaming Monday mornings. Uh, Monday mornings are my morning merch missions and it's mostly me going out and doing merchant alliance quests in the old sea of thieves the th the three seas uh just to kind of get some gold and relax you know kind of wake up and have someone something to do on on at the beginning of the week for everyone to kind of hang out and just chat with me about what's been going on in case they have any feedback about the show or if they listen to it if they they liked some of the stupid stuff that i say all the time that for some reason everyone really enjoys anyway let's get into the next topic <laughs> Next up on today's docket, let's get into the captain's log. And this week, I oh man, last week I had some really good adventures. This week I had some really fun adventures. And all of them have really been just about hanging out with some of the community members out in the Sea of Thieves. It hasn't even been anything that's been too malicious. Uh, I think I think yesterday was the most PvP I've done in quite a while. You know, we've, we've been out and, you know, you always run into those crews that just want to be out there and sink some ships. And, you know, that's fine. They, that, they're doing their thing. They're doing their piratey thing. They want to 
you know, pirate their way and we'll sink them. And that's just generally how it ends. But uh, most of the time, I would say that the Devil's Roar has been so tough on people and people are wanting to experience the new content so much that we're kind of in that same loop where every time a nice big content drop comes out and people need a lot of gold, they really want to jump into an alliance and kind of grind out those voyages. So this week with the cargo runs, uh, I, I got to spend some time with Mina Ferry from the, the Discord, from the Keel Hall Discord, and we just we just did some casual sailing, you know, we went and we talked, we did some cargo runs, and for whatever reason, we we had the strangest pirates come upon us. The first time, we were just kind of sailing over to Ancient Spire Outposts to turn some stuff in. Nothing major, just some chickens and a couple, you know, rum bottles and uh, silks, plants, things like that. We get there and there's a ship and I shoot myself over to the sh over to the island to try and kind of, that's, it's kind of my new thing is just kind of shooting myself over, trying to get in contact with people so that I can actually say hi, see if they want to shoot me or see if maybe they want to join our alliance or, you know, just what their intentions are. As we're getting up to the island, they just start firing at us. Uh, this this guy is being aggressive to me. He's uh, shooting at me with his blunderbuss uh, from a long distance, which is, as, as I understand it, it's actually super effective. Uh, at least he thought so. And he starts swiping at me with my sword. Uh, with not, not my sword, his sword. He starts swiping at me with his sword. And recently, and, and pirates, maybe you can kind of talk to this or not, but recently... I've decided to switch back to my flintlock pistol. I've been using the IR reach for a long time and it's been serving me fairly well. But recently I remembered that a flintlock pistol two shots people. And I don't know if this changed at some point, which caused me to switch off of it, but it feels like I can actually get shots better now in with a flintlock pistol. And with the shorter reload time, I've been getting a lot more precise hits on pirates and taking them down. So that being said, uh, this pirate was coming at me on Ancient Spire Outpost, and he he put in an effort. It it wasn't it wasn't a strong effort, but it was definitely an aggressive move. And and this is coming from someone who is walking around with a speaking trumpet, going, "Hello, is anybody here? Can you hear me? Hello, I don't think anyone's here. I think it's safe to pull the oh." God! Get away! So that was that was basically the, <laughs> that was my experience, man. It's been so weird. People have just been randomly aggressive towards me, and uh, so I, I killed this guy. I got on his ship. I raised the anchor, and I figured, all right, I'm just going to sail this guy away for a little bit. He's got a gold hoarder mission down and a snake basket in his in his sloop, and I don't know what his goal was, but. I just sailed him off towards the Devil's Roar. Probably probably not the nicest thing, but I only killed him once. I mean, it's not like I just, you know, kept him dead. I killed him, and then as soon as it felt like I was getting, you know, a good enough distance away, I jumped off his ship and grabbed a mermaid and went and helped Mina get some stuff off of the ship. It, you know, it's not that bad, is it? Anyway, he decided he was upset, and he wanted revenge for whatever and he starts sailing back towards the island and as he's sailing back towards the island it's comical because he's really bad at the cannon and <laughs> he starts chasing after us so mina's sailing the ship towards devil's ridge because that's kind of where our next destination is and she, well she didn't want us to lose the ship so we just kind of set sail and kind of kept going jumped off got into the water boarded his ship killed him turned the ship ran it into ancient spire which i'm sure that the, the I'm sure they really appreciated that in the shops as a giant ship is like cresting over their beach into their courtyard uh, and proceed to, to kill him one more time just to ensure that the ship sinks. And then he just disappeared. He just he never came back. So after that, we figured, OK, well, that was probably the it was probably just one person. They weren't in game chat. They weren't talking to us. They weren't communicating in any way probably younger, maybe, I don't know, just kind of a weird situation. So we, we kind of brush it off as nothing too major. And we managed to sail off with a Merchant Alliance quest and no crates because I put them on the dock and forgot to load them onto the actual ship. Meanwhile, we've got a fair amount of cargo that we have to take over to Steven Spoils and some uh, islands that we were planning on hitting up for some chickens and pigs. We get out to Steven's Spoils and we drop off the rum and the plants and 
stuff and realize that we don't have the crates uh, shortly afterwards and figure, okay, well, we've got two, we've got a, a, a two crates of, of planks and a crate of bananas with voyages from messages in a barrel to go turn into the plunder outpost. So we figured, okay, well, we'll just, we'll go back to plunder outpost and we'll grab the crates. We'll turn in what we have and it'll be awesome. You know, a little sidetrack, nothing too major. Then a galleon starts sailing towards us out of nowhere. I didn't even see this thing coming. It had just passed Lost Gold Fort and was sailing towards us at the Plunder Outpost. Meanwhile, we're we're heading from Stephen Spoils just just off the coast of Snake Island. And in, at the, you know, they're they're coming pretty aggressive and I figure all right, well we got our alliance flag up. We'll drop anchor pretty away from the dock. So it's not nothing too aggressive, you know. We're obviously giving them a little berth in case they want to dock properly. We'll just toss our stuff in and grab some crates. It won't be a big deal. No. Someone on their ship just start starts to fire cannonballs. And at this point, I am so frustrated frustrated that people are being aggressive that I'm just like, nope, Mina, if you turn in that chest, that's cool. I'm going to take this sloop. I'm going to go sink this galleon. They, they just, they sailed around uh, a quick little circle and then they dropped anchor and they got stuck. And I'm like, all right, I've got some ballast balls and an anchor ball and a lot of just pent up like frustration with these pirates not talking not communicating with me about what their intentions are other than shooting first. So I retaliate in the only way I think was uh, worth it. And I sink their ship. Later, we just after we finish sinking their ship, I've got our ship kind of slowly kind of coming into the coast, into docking position where we can actually unload the rest of our stuff and load up the crates for the the pigs and chickens. This is all this is all because I had forgotten that I had actually pulled the crates from the Merchant Alliance back on Ancient Spire. I still think that they're available for us to pick up anywhere. As we're sailing towards the dock, there's one guy who has worked out to get in game chat and use his spinking trumpet, and he's yelling at us for sinking his ship and shooting at it and shooting at him and I'm like dude what are you talking about you were the one that fired first he's like we were and I'm like yes of course you were why else I like there's an etiquette there's a shoot first etiquette that most pirates not all most pirates will generally abide by when, when you're out in the sea and he's like oh I'm sorry I'm kind of new to the game and I was like oh that's why they were so bad. They haven't gotten the sailing experience down yet. They haven't figured out the best way to come into an engagement. That's why we survived. It wasn't because I was good. It definitely wasn't because I was doing what I should have been doing well enough. It was because they hadn't had enough. Okay, so come to find out, most of their crew had actually left. And <laughs> it was just this one guy on a, on, a, on a galleon. And he abandoned ship shortly after anch anchoring down. I think he went to go turn something in. And I felt so bad for sinking this dude's ship that I gave him the, the crate of, of planks, or one of them. And I was like, here you go. Just come over here and turn this in to that person. And this is kind of my mea copa for sinking your galleon and not realizing. But realistically, someone shot at us, and I have no clue who it was, and I wasn't going to let that slide. So I kind of give him some uh, pointers on the game, give him a little more information, teach him what a mermaid is. Uh, the mermaid was happy enough to send him back to his galleon, and that was kind of the end of our voyage. But God, it was such a it was such a strange encounter for us just to to have random pirates be aggressive and not not good aggressive, just aggressive. And and to have most of them not actually even chat with us was was even more frustrating. If I could just know like they were intentionally trying to be aggressive and be a pirate, I'm fine with that. I can fight that. But if they're just being aggressive just for the sake of seeing another person, I don't know if it's because if it's like a like a bad battle royale mentality that is now now kind of crept into the gaming communities but shooting first asking questions later is just i don't know i i kind of wish that i had that dialogue with other people you know not to trash talk but just to kind of go in knowing like what their intentions are even if they're false intentions and misleading me at least i know that i was betrayed by someone as opposed to just being like i don't know what they're doing they're just trying to sink our ship I don't know. Regardless, I had a really good time. I wish I had time to actually get into the the story of Opus, the 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 best Sea of Thieves mechanic you could ever want. He can replace flat tires faster than any other sloop out on the ocean. Uh, but I had a really <laughs> a really good time with some other pirates this week. 
whom I shall try and actually get out there and sail with later on too, because I really want to uh, try and get out there and spend some more time with my community and, and get some other people to join the uh, the Keelhaul Discord, because it's it's a lot of fun, and there's a lot of good pirates in there, and I want to start getting them all to Pirate Legend. Uh, I think there's, I'm, I'm working on a list of Keelhaul pod or uh, discord podcast fans who aren't pirate legend who need to be pirate legend because they deserve it because they are pirate legends in my eyes and i want to help grind that out for them so i'll i'll be looking to do that on stream and off stream uh so if you're listening to this join the discord jump in let me know that you want to get to pirate legend and we'll try and get you to pirate legend especially with some of the stuff coming out that is going to be just for pirate legends it's going to be a little more interesting than just the typical Athena's fortune, uh, where you can make a lot of gold, a lot of gold. It's so much. Oh, I love it. Anyway, that's going to do as far as the captain's log. Just after this, if you thought, if you liked this story, this is, this is nothing. This is just like pittance. I'm just chatting. I've got a special Jorvik Sea of Thieves first mate's log that I'm going to drop in here. He put one into the discord recently and I'm, I'm putting this in blind because I want to listen to it on my own without spoiling it for myself. Uh, that's how selfish I'm being right now. Is I'm 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 completely dropping this in uh, without actually listening to it. When you listen to it, it will probably be the first or second time that I've actually listened to it. I haven't quite decided yet. I'm kind of interested, and I want to make sure that I at least proof it and get the sound levels right when I mix it in. So that being said, without further ado, Captain Jorvik. <laughs> Ahoy, mates. This be Captain Jorvik. And as ye all know, a heat be coming from the eastern air, as the very mouth of hell hath opened up and put apart the devil's shroud straight into the roar of Satan himself. Of course, I'm talking of the forsaken shores, where gold and wealth is aplenty, but not for the faint of heart. For the wrong pirates at your side could mean detriment and death in the midst of doom and destruction. But let me tell you a tale of such a night, when I was crewed up with Rusty Bucket, who had brought along a green pirate friend of his own. Now this young sailor had entered into the Sea of Thieves just as the very world was erupting around him. Definitely a trial by fire, and make no mistake of that. We loaded up a galleon and headed east, seeking out buried treasures, jumping island to island, dodging the fireballs that rose in our path. We'd been gifted with treasure maps from a long hard voyage, and as we stopped at one of our islands, we faced a threat that many now know. As the earth shank and geysers started blasting water all around us, we ran back to our ship, swimming as fast as we could, getting down below and hunkering as fire rained above us. The ship was tossed left and right, and we found ourselves with buckets and boards in hand ready for whatever may fall. I could smell the burnt wood as embers dropped down for the blast from above. But let me tell you, lads, the Galleon is a tough ship, and she can take more than her share of whatever the devil may throw at her. And only with a few holes hitting us from below and quick patchwork at the ready, we survived the entire volcano. And once done, we went out for our quarry, shoveling up the treasures and loading them up on our ship. Now, near the end of our voyages, we'd actually been joined by a pirate whose name I could not quite pronounce. But with a full crew, we made way to Morrow's outpost. Now, in the Devil's Roar, ye know as well as I that even an outpost is not a place of respite. For as we arrived there, a small sloop was waiting. With too much treasure on board to even attempt an alliance, we felt it was best to say hello with a few rounds of cannonballs, blasting the ship and sending its few contents to the bottom of the ocean, and of course, our pockets. Now while I was searching the outpost for the pirates below, I gave order to my crew to dispose of our gunpowder barrels that we had collected in our voyage, as I didn't want our potential enemy getting the wrong idea that he could just climb up and use them against us to blow up our ship. Ah, but here be the problem, lads. It's a poor captain that blames his crew. And perhaps I should have given more specific orders, but the young green pirate who had never seen the seas in such a capacity and hadn't yet been on a ship since the days in which gunpowder barrels did not have ways in which for us to light them. 
started offloading the gunpowder barrels below, dropping them from the crow's nest he did until he came to the last one, igniting it by accident. The ship was blasted and half my crew along with it, leaving naught but me and the pirate whose name I couldn't pronounce to go and collect the loot that was bobbing up and down in the water beneath us. And as we were gathering up the treasures, the water around us started to boil, and the lands on the shore began to shake, and sure enough, the very volcano of the outpost blasted fire and lava down upon us. I'm glad to say we got many a captain's chest turned in, but in the end our voyage was cut short before we could get the lion's share of the treasure. But that be the risk you take in the devil's roar, and a risk it is worth taking. For as the fire comes up around you, and all of hell itself comes to face you, it is only for the boldest of pirates, and those among you, with the sharpest of wit, and a fully stocked ship at the ready. Load up your galleons, lads. Bring the keel-hauled fleet to the east. Forsaken shores await, and wealth, and fortunes along with it. Go then and face the fires, lads. This be Captain Jorvik, signing out. Alright Pirates, time to get towards the end of our episode today. I just want to touch on a couple quick things, just really quick shots from the hip. The giveaway for the Athena's Fortune Book is still active. You have one more week to get that review on Apple Podcasts in to get qualified so you have a chance at winning out that Athena's Fortune. Again, that's for my US of A, my Canadians, and my uh, my Brits, my favorite, favorite UK uh, group over there. So my three largest listener bases, you guys get this special, special, special uh, Athena's Fortune giveaway. Um, if you aren't in those territories and you still want to try and win this copy of the book, I still have the Twitter one going on as well too. There will be, and I'm constantly trying to get this, keep keep it refreshed. There is a tweet out there that has a gleam. I will put the link in the show notes so you can access it so that you can get yourself in place that's open to anyone in the world. I will for, for, uh, I'll put the cost in. Winners will be picked on Sunday, next episode, basically. Next episode, I will have picked the winners and I will announce them on the show and you will hear it first thing Monday morning. So the 21st is the end of that uh, the end of that episode. And I'll probably end up having to do the drawing a little bit sooner just to make sure that I can get it into the episode. I'll probably have to record it after midnight and then put it in afterwards. I'll work that out. That's, that's, on, that's on me. Don't worry about that. That's on me. Um, we also had... And I'm gonna, oh man, I'm pushing, I'm pushing through this really quickly. Uh, the ferry of the dam was changed, and we no longer have the closed kind of uh, raised area between the capstan and the midmast. Uh, that is now a great very similar to other galleons. And that is what I'm assuming is in anticipation for the next bilge rat update. Uh, thanks to Twitter community for finding this for me, but that is actually something you'll notice now. So with the, with the fairy of the damned, with the, uh, the, the celebration of the fairy of the damned, the next bilge rat update for the one for the, the holiday that is going to revolve around the, the information that I got, which we still haven't had confirmation on, but will probably involve a flame down in the fairy of the damned that will actually cause you to take the flame and then use it or have it as a way of knowing like how to decorate your ship uh, so like taking that flame and then putting that flame in your lantern uh, on your ship so you can show people like you know I have a blue flame for dying to a shark and I have a red flame for dying to a, a powder keg or I have a green flame from dying to poison um, I'm making this up I have no actual idea what it what that what what the flames are gonna be like but that's just kind of what I imagine as I go into thinking of this. Plus, we're getting face paints. Yay, face paints. I can't wait. Anyway, that's going to... Sorry, that was really loud. Anyway, that's going to do it for this week. All right, pirates. That's going to do it for this episode. So, like I said, I'm going to be reading all the reviews that I get. I got four five-star reviews this last week as entries for the giveaway, as well as just people reviewing the show. So the first one is from Lucky Daddy 731 uh, Love the podcast. Love listening to the show every week. You're always up to date on what's new to the sea and have, have some of the best stories. My favorite podcast, just wish it could last eight hours to get me all the way through a workday. 
<laughs> Thank you, Lucky Daddy. I don't know if I could handle doing eight hours of the podcast. That's a lot of chatting, but I'm I'm glad that you <laughs> I'm glad that you like those longer shows. The next one is from uh, Kate Odd. I think I know who that is. Anyway, five star review. Strap yourself to the mast and subscribe. Excellent podcast. Captain Logan covers everything you want to know about Sea of Thieves. If you're interested in lore, he's got you covered. Want to know about updates? He covers that too. Curious about what other community members are up to? He's stowed away on their ships a few times and lets you know what they're up to. He also shares his and other community members' captain's logs. Keep up the great work. Kate, thank you very much. I appreciate that. The next one is another five star, the definitive Sea of Thieves podcast from Alaskan, Alaska Grown 49, who kudos to you for sticking with the 49 man 907 for life. Uh, all my Alaska friends would probably love it. Uh, the title says it all. This is Hands or Hooks. Down the best podcast for honest and up-to-date information regarding Sea of Thieves. Captain Logan's passion and enthusiasm for this game is evident in his presentation and is infectious. I genuinely look forward to each new episode every week. Tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast for information regarding the current state of the game, in-depth and thought-out analysis, discussion of the lore, and great stories of adventures on the sea, which, as an aficionado of this game will attest, is what makes it truly special so raise a tankard of grog and join me in saluting this salty dog on a job well done thank you alaskan grown i appreciate that and the last one dumble ha 60 i love your podcast it's the best my favorite part is the captain's log but i also like the spoilers see you on the sea of thieves pirates i love you I'm going to put all the contact information as I close out this episode. If you're listening and you want to get a hold of me, there's always good ways to do it. Best way, at Twitter, A at C-A-P-T underscore L-O-G-U-N. I've got an email, C-A-P-T L-O-G-U-N at gmail.com. You can always join me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash C-A-P-T underscore L-O-G-U-N. Or if you want to message me on Xbox, feel free to do so. Captain Logan, C-A-P-T-A-I-N-L-O-G-U-N. Keep your eyes peeled. This week, I'm going to be streaming for sure. I've got some time off and uh, one of my classes is ending, so I'm going to have some more free time. So other than that, Pirates, thank you. I love you. I can't wait to sail with you on the Sea of Thieves.